Greetings, everyone, and welcome. I'm the Chancellor Soul Mike Boone. You tune in to the Hank Ballad Story Part 2. The Story of the Twist. Well, it all started with the doo-wop group, The Spaniels, of VJ Records. The same group that gave you the hit, Good Night, Sweetheart, Good Night. They were approached by two members of the gospel group, The Sensational Nightingales, who composed a song called The Twist. But being a gospel group, they couldn't record a suggestive secular song. They offered the song to Lil' Joe and the Thrillers at first, but they turned it down. The Spaniels then took it to their label, VJ. The company recorded the song on the group, but they never released it. Well, the Nightingales decided to give the song to Hank Ballard and the Midnighters. Now, Hank Ballard's guitarist, Cal Green, said that Hank liked the song. They recorded the demo, in which they sent to VJ. Now, the Midnighters' contract was about to expire, and they wanted to sign with VJ. Their contract was under a 30-day option, but Sid Nathan of King Records heard the potential in the song and decided to pick up the option a day before the expiration date. Nathan then told VJ owners that the group was still under contract on the King and recording for him. The Midnighters VJ version of the twist stayed in the can for 34 years until its release in 1993 on a compilation CD entitled R&B Votes from the VJ Vaults. Since the twist wasn't copywritten, Hank claimed authorship of the song. Now, the twist was based on a tune that Hank and Cal Green collaborated on called Is Your Love For Real? Is Your Love For Real was adapted from Clyde and Fatter and the Drifters' classic 1955 hit what you gonna do? But later changed the lyrics to twist lyrics. Now listen to the similarities of both songs. Now, we go to Hank Ballard's story on how the twist was born. Well, Hank Ballard's story of the twist went something like this. One night during a concert at the Royal Theater in Baltimore, Maryland, Hank and the Midnighters were performing on stage doing twist gyrations as a routine. In other words, Dirty dancing. Now the Midnighters had picked up the dance through the kids in the audience and added as a stage attraction. Hank became inspired to write a song about their dance and he called it The Twist. The Midnighters re-recorded the song at King Records, plus a ballad called Teardrops on Your Letter. In promotion, Hank begged the company to promote The Twist, but Sid Nathan insisted that the ballad Teardrops on Your Letter was the hit side. So the twist became the B-side. Now the dance became exposed on the Buddy Dean Show in Baltimore, Maryland. The Buddy Dean Show was like Dick Clark's American Bandstand. Very popular over there in Philadelphia and the Buddy Dean Show was very popular in Baltimore. Now Buddy had this segment trying to integrate black people on the show. And the segment was called Negro Day. Where black kids were allowed to come on and dance on the show. Now on Negro Day, the black kids exposed dance to twist on the show. Dean became quite intrigued and called Dick Clark and told him that there was a record by Hank Ballard and the Midnighters called The Twist. Dick refused to even hear the song, fearing that it might be another one of those dirty records done by Hank and the guys. So instead, Clark had a young 19-year-old nightclub singer named Chubby Checker to cover Hank's version of The Twist. Released in June 1960, the song became an instant smash. 
One day, Hank was swimming in the pool in the Miami, Florida hotel when he heard Chubby's version on the radio. <laughs> he was fooled thinking it was him because Chubby had done such a great clone of his voice. But it was Chubby Checker that won out the bet. Well, not one to be bitter, Hank twisted all the way to the bank. Well, the twist rose to worldwide meteoric proportions, where it not only charted number one twice in 1961 and 1962 pop, but it introduced a new concept of dancing called apart dancing, where neither partners touch and everyone dances independently. Through the ensuing years of his early career, Hank Ballard had measured a yardstick level of success. But can his level of success be duplicated towards the dawn of a new decade to come? The 1960s.